Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Stranger and welcome back to another video. And it's been a while since I did an Amen tutorial. So I thought I'd bring it all up to date and do a new walkthrough on how I edit and create Amen breaks. So we'll just get right into it. I have here an Amen break here. It's a pretty raw, unedited file ripped straight from the record. I'll include a link to it in the comments below. And I pulled it in as an audio here. So I'm just gonna, let me just play it. I'll just play it at a slower tempo since uh, Ableton will re, uh, uh, will sequence it to the right BPM of your track. So let's just play it slower so we can hear how it sounds. So it's sounding pretty tough. Uh, this is sounding pretty uh, crisp. And the section I like using with the Amen is you, is mostly this section here. It's the last bar and a half. So uh, typically I would cut every slice of the entire sample, but just to make things a bit quicker today, I'm just gonna cut the section that I use most, which is this section over here. So I'm just gonna um, first mark the beginning where I want to cut, which is here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight this section, right click, select loop selection, and then right click again and select crop. So what crop does is it, it cuts the sample uh, between the your loop points. So that's why we loop first. We select your uh, the sample, loop it, and then crop it. And now you have a uh, condensed sample and we can get rid of uh, this as well you we just do that again crop sample perfect and now we can actually cut the slices so by default Ableton has identified the transients whereas which is where that the, there are percussive hits there's like a defined hit uh, at these points and you can kind of tell there's this little triangle icon here up in the ruler that identifies that there is a transient here sometimes i i don't i don't i don't trust the algorithm 100 percent, so i like to zoom right in just to make sure uh it's pretty close i mean it's here. I personally, I would like to cut it closer to here. So I will just double click there. But if, if you like this piece, then highlight over it and then double click. What you want is to create a warp marker, is, which is identified by the yellow icon. Okay. And we'll zoom right in. So this one is incorrect. It has the marker here, but this, this snare, this is a snare here. And it actually starts here. So if I play it, oh, yeah, okay. And then I'll go into the next hit. So again, it's not the, it's not perfect. It has it here. I like it probably around here. Zoom right in. Now I'm going to bring this back to 170. Okay, the next step is we're going to right click over the waveform and select slice to MIDI. And what this will do is it'll send each slice here to a different pad on your drum rack. So we're going to slice to MIDI. This window pops up. It says create one slice per warp marker. That's correct. Slicing preset. Uh, this should be fine. Preserve warp timing. We're going to say off. And we're going to click OK. Okay. Now I've just muted my audio channel. And now we're going to listen to the MIDI. The drum rack. As you notice, we now have a slice for each hit here. As you can see, it's now sent the audio to a MIDI track here. Okay. Now I'm just gonna 
Uh, I'm gonna make a copy. I'm gonna duplicate this MIDI clip. Hit play. And then I'm gonna make my own pattern. So I'm gonna make this two bars and get, get rid of these guys here. Um, Typically what I like to do is I like to quantize the eighth notes. So that's any of any hits that land on these positions here. Uh, I'll, I'll just do the main hits first. Hit control U. And then for these guys to preserve the, the ghost notes, the, the humanization of the ghost notes. And notice how this ghost note is bit off. I select both of these and then I move move them accordingly so that uh, they're still proportionately in this um, or relatively in the same position however you can just move this guy that's totally fine too uh, however I sometimes I like to select both of these guys and just do that that just makes sure my hi-hats are lined up and I'll just lengthen that Okay, and I just want to make sure the ends meet. Okay, okay, pretty good. Now we can try a more new school pattern. We can do that out of double kick. Repeat that. This is a common pattern that we use in drum and bass, especially jungle. Okay, I'm gonna add an EQ. Audio effects bring out EQ8. I like to make my high ends really crisp for that new school sound, so around around 10,000 to 11,000 hertz will give you that new school crisp. Okay, that sounded pretty crisp. And then you can bring up the, the snares by adjusting another EQ. I find anywhere between 1200 hertz all the way up to around 2800 hertz brings out certain aspects of the snare. It makes a snap here, it brings out that snap. Sometimes I narrow the resonance to to really focus in on that frequency. You can turn it off and on just to see the difference. And to make that snare pop, it's around 900 hertz, around to 1100. You see how it has that hollow sound that makes the snare pop. So that's around 918 for me. Okay, we'll add another EQ. So sometimes what we like to do is thin out some of the low mids around the 300 area. Those are kind of the box frequencies. It makes you feel like you're inside a box. We'll just add a slight dip there.
The other thing you can do is you can pitch the amen. Now, if you pitch it, this would it would change all the EQ settings. So wait, I'm just going to show you. You might want to adjust the pitch, right? So we can adjust, transpose, perhaps three semitones up. And then you got to right click and copy value to siblings. Because otherwise it's only the slice that's pitched up. You notice how? It's just the first hit. So right click that transpose pitch, copy to siblings. So that's with three semitones up. Uh, or you can bring it down. Let's try three semitones down. That's cool too. I, I'm liking zero at the zero pitch though. So we'll just keep it there. could add additional hits to accentuate the kicks. So I'll go find a kick. We'll bring that guy in. So it's a double kick, two bar loop. So since we have a kick here, we can remove some of the low end from the amen. Adjust the level. Another way to really give the amen character is to use multi band compression. So you guys seen me use this a lot. The Vaster, we'll pull this guy over here. Uh, we'll just turn the EQ off for now and we'll go through some settings on the Vaster. Notice how it totally changes the character. This one's sounding tough. Now, you could try bringing the EQ after and we'll see how that changes it up. Actually, I'm liking it before. So this is the dry and wet. You can adjust the amount of uh, distortion. So this is no, no distortion. Somewhere around here is nice. You get a bit of the original signal. Amen sounding nice and fresh. Well, add a baseline just to hear how it sounds in context. Yeah, that sounds kind of cool. So I'm going to bring in sampler.
A two bar loop. So there you have it. You got some steps to create some fresh sounding amens. I uh, showed you guys how to EQ the amen and then perhaps add some multi band compression. You can definitely take it a step further, but I think we're, we're gonna stop here today and I'll have a part two on editing and, and processing your amen. But why don't you guys focus on this first, chopping up the amen, getting a nice little pattern and then EQing it, EQing itself uh, will take time to master and then adding some distortion. And then once you have a nice loop, then you can add a baseline and voila. So let me know if you found this video helpful, like and subscribe if you are into it. And let me know what else you'd like to learn in future videos. And until then, we'll see you at the next video.